Welcome back to another episode of Knock Stiff Golf. I am Kyle, and today we're gonna to be talking about is golf dying? So today we're gonna to be talking about a topic that's pretty near and dear to my heart. I get so stuck up in kind of playing the game of golf and seeing what new gears out there and really being selfish about just getting better at the game in general. I, I need to take a step back sometimes and think about what am I doing for the game of golf? How am I growing it? What's come across my life in the last few years is I have a stepson. His name's Aiden, he's nine years old, and he'll see me chipping and putting, and he knows that I play plenty of golf, and sometimes he'll take up an interest and wanna chip with me in the living room or, or putt, and so we'll have this bonding experience where we're playing the game together, and I'm not gonna be one of those people that forces him to do it, but I just wanna see if he picks it up as we go. And it's very important to me that I foster that in him and maybe help him appreciate the game. And I can't promise that he'll share the same love that I do, but I can always be there to encourage him to try it out. This uh, past year, we went out to a course that I grew up on when I was a kid. It's called Russian Jack Golf Links. It's a very, under-maintained local golf course here in Anchorage, Alaska that has been around and it's notorious for its greens that are astroturf and seem to bounce like concrete when you hit them. So it makes it for an adventure. Well, we got to go out there together and I got to show them basically where I grew up playing the game of golf. And I would go out there with my friends and we'd go in there in the summer with, you know, seven bucks in our pocket and squeeze in as many holes as we could over the course of a summer day. And that was where I kind of picked up the love of the game, was just being out there outside, swinging a club and hitting the ball as, as hard as I could. And it didn't matter what we scored, it didn't matter anything other than we were just playing a game, just like any other game. Now, I took him out there and I was having a blast myself just getting to relive all the holes that I grew up on and trying to get him to swing and hit the ball at some sort of a target. And even though he found interest in other things like looking for golf balls in the bushes, which was essentially a game of Easter egg hunting for him, it was hard to, to say, hey, let's play golf, because he was having a blast doing something that wasn't necessarily golf, but it was part of the game. And that's what we've all experienced is looking in the woods for our ball at some point or another. So it was just really one of those experiences where I wanted to introduce him to the game, but never force him into trying to play it. And I think over time, he'll maybe develop a passion for it and we'll see where that goes. So this brings me to my next point about growing the game is a lot of us get stuck in our, our golf groups. I have a lot of friends that golf and then I have a lot of golf friends. And so what I mean by that is most of my friends have tried golf at one point or another and would gladly go. And then I have my serious committed friends that golf religiously as I do. Our tournament players are uh, two to three times a week playing golf. And that tends to be where I hover with those like-minded people. But what I need to remember is that that group of people that don't golf as often are still looking for people to go with, are still looking to maybe find that fire like the other players have. So it's partly our job to, to get with that group and say, hey, let's go play nine tonight. You know, you, you might not be the same skill sets or anything like that, but you guys can still enjoy the game together. Maybe you're gonna help a golfer find that passion for life by going out for nine holes with him, having a beer and talking about life or whatever comes across what in golf when you're out there together for two hours or four hours if you're playing 18 holes or six hours depending where you're playing but it's really important to kind of get outside your bubble and it's and this isn't towards anybody this is towards myself mainly because i fail at this all the time i'm always wanting to play with better golfers and and all these things to push my game to the next level that i can't forget people that are new to the game or may not have the same network that i have so it's important to take that time, get to know somebody new, get out there on the course together, and maybe you can be the reason that somebody finds love for the game for the rest of their life. 
So I know this is kind of a, sh a shorter video, but I just kind of wanted to discuss this a little bit because I feel like it always gets left behind in a lot of videos about improving your game and what's new and what gear are we playing, but it's just like three things you could probably do to kind of change golf for somebody in your life. I mean, whether that's going out and lending somebody your your golf books, a book that meant the most to you, well, Golf in the Kingdom, or Putting Out of Your Mind, or any one of those classic books that could get somebody fired up, that's one of the steps you could take. Number two would be maybe invite somebody out to the range or to the practice green and just playing a few games with them. That's a very short time commitment. You can show them a seven up or some sort of range game where they can see from maybe potentially a better player how to practice, how to improve, because most of us want to do that. And the third thing is introduce them to somebody new in the community. Most of the people that I play with, I put them in touch with each other in some way, shape or form. If I have a foursome that I usually play with all the time, I'll invite another guy when one guy can't and then it becomes kind of a network and it kind of grows and grows and grows and then next thing you know you have 16 guys that can call any one of those people and get them to fill in a spot for a tea time during the summer. It's one of those things where it's your responsibility to grow the game to, to where you want it to be. There's always going to be the snobby, the outcast, all these people that you have no control over. All you can do is control how you affect the game and who you're spreading that to. Hope this has been helpful. At the end of the day, we all love golf more than a lot of things. And what we should be doing is trying to spread that love and grow the game. So thanks for tuning in again. As always, like, comment, subscribe, spread the word, grow the game, and I look forward to seeing you guys next time. All right.